Today we're going to look at our very first calculation of a confidence interval in the chapter of analysis of one categorical variable. So when you look at paragraphs like this, there are a couple of things that you'll be interested in. You're always interested in the number of people sampled, how confident you want to be, and also your successes. So it says that a Clemson University student's research into turtle crossing found that 267 um, drivers, seven of them hit fake turtles. And we want to calculate a 95% confidence interval for this. So in this step one, we will first identify our population. And for this example, it's just generically all drivers. Second, we want to identify the sample, and for this, it appears that our sample is the 267 drivers. And then one thing that I want to add here is what we'll end up making our inference on when we're done calculating the confidence interval. And that is referred to as a parameter, and here our parameter of interest is P. So when we define P, we're going to define it as proportion or percent or probability, depending on what's described in the paragraph. Then it will be of your population, so proportion of, and we said our population was all drivers. And then you want to include your success, and this is all drivers who would hit fake turtles. So I like to do this at this point because it helps me to set my sights on what all of this effort is going into. I want to be able to make an inference on this particular parameter. So then remember in step two we state our assumptions, and our assumption is always the same for this uh, chapter. We're going to assume that the sampling distribution of p hat is normally distributed. But we can only make this assumption if our conditions are met. So to remind you, the conditions are that n times p hat and n times 1 minus p hat have to be greater than or equal to 10. So the n that we have is 267, and we haven't calculated p hat yet, and the formula for p hat is x, the number of successes, divided by n. So we had 7 successes divided by 267 in the sample, And with proportion problems, you'll want to go out to the um, to four decimal places. So 0 0.0262 will be our value for p hat. So we have 267 times p hat. And that actually is equal to 7. And then we have... 267 times 1 minus p hat, which is equal to 0. about 260. So it actually turns out because of this that our conditions are not met, which also means then that for this problem, we cannot assume normality. And that means then that if you cannot assume a normal distribution, you should not be using the formulas that are shown below. 
Now, for the sake of illustration and you understanding how to calculate a confidence interval, we're going to work through the rest of the steps. And I would never have this type of situation happen on an exam or a homework or a quiz. But I want you to realize that if one of these, even just one, does not meet the condition of being greater than or equal to 10, these formulas are inappropriate to use because you no longer would be able to assume that you have a normal distribution. But as I said, we're going to continue on uh, for the sake of seeing a confidence interval all the way through. So the first part of step four in letter A is to calculate p hat, which we already did. And then we want the confidence level multiplier. Now we want it to be 95% confident. And if you remember the table on page three, there is underneath 95.6. Then we need to calculate standard error in letter C. And the formula for that is p hat times one minus p hat all over n. So plugging in the values that we know, I'm going to do it in separate steps. So the numerator, so p times 1 minus p, and then I will divide that product by n. So this is what I have underneath the radical, and then I'm going to take the square root of that. You may do it however you would like, but rounding is not ideal. So if you can leave it in the calculator and use the answer function, or you could enter it with parentheses, but practice so you can get as close to this value as possible. So this is standard error, and again, go out to four decimal places. The next we'll calculate margin of error, which frequently is just written out as ME, and that takes the multiplier times standard error. So we calculated and have those values from B and C shown above. So I have 1.96 times 0 0.0098. And I come up with a margin of error, and we'll go out to four decimal places. So that's equal to 0 0.192. And then finally, we'll calculate the confidence interval itself. And to do that, we take our statistic, which is p hat, and then remember we add and subtract margin of error. So right now we have 0 0.0262 plus or minus, and then we calculated margin of error above. So when we do this, it's best to subtract first to give you the lower bound. So I come up with 0 0.007 as my lower bound. And then you would add second to get your upper bound. So I have a lower bound of 0 0.007 and then an upper bound of 0 0.0454. So we have the confidence interval, and now to interpret it, we start with how confident we are. So here we would say we are 95% confident, and this is coming from the multiplier that we used. Now I'm going to state the parameter that we defined up top, so the proportion of all drivers who would hit fake turtles. So we're 95% confident, the proportion of all drivers who would hit fake turtles is between, and now we just state the interval. 
So it's between 0 0.007 and 0 0.0454. Oops, I'm so sorry. So you'll notice that there are three pieces of information that are needed when you are interpreting a confidence interval. You need the confidence level. You need your parameter of interest, which will include your population and the success. And then you also need the interval. So this is the confidence level. This is my parameter of interest. And then finally, the interval itself. So if you have those three things, you should have a good interpretation of your confidence interval. One thing I want to point out is that these confidence intervals are symmetric about p hat. So there's the same amount of area below as above because we're adding and subtracting margin of error, which doesn't change. However, when you calculate a confidence interval, you just say that somewhere in the interval we're hoping is P is the value we're trying to make an inference on, and we're just saying we hope it's in there. We're not sure where in the interval it is. It's just somewhere in between 0 0.007 and 0 0.0454.